Hello, everybody. Idre here. For anybody new here, I make casual reviews, and it is just my opinion. So take everything I say with a massive grain of salt. But today I'm doing the third and some in my like tier ranking videos. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of, and talk here about a band that I love quite a bit. Arguably, oh, behind uh, other than the best one, I mean, probably my favorite band, um, Radiohead. I am going to be doing a tier ranking of every Radiohead album, all nine of them. Uh, let me share my screen and let's get right to this. All right, so here we have the nine Radiohead albums Pablo Honey, The Bands, Pucky Computer, Kid A, Amnesiac, Hail of the Thief, and Rainbows, King of Limbs, and A Moon Shaped Pool. And once again, you might notice that these tiers are pretty positive 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then 5 or less. Um, with all of that being said, I think it is time to place the first Radiohead album, the notorious, super notorious Pablo Honey. Where does Pablo Honey go in my opinion? What are my overall opinions here? Pablo Honey gets a lot of hate. Uh, for some good reasons, for some bad reasons. For one, it is one of their least technically advanced albums. I get that. It's definitely not as inventive as some of their later works. But to me, you cannot take that away from some of the deep cuts on this album. There are a lot of parts of Pablo Honey that I enjoy a lot. Uh, obviously, the big song Creep, is, I, I think, is still a great song, even if it is overplayed. But like You, you know, Lurgy, uh, Blowout, all great songs. Stop Whispering, I even enjoy quite a bit. However, it does have its flaws, and I think as time goes on, the flaws do show a bit more. So I really don't think it should land anywhere up here, but I am going to put it in that seven rank. I still get a lot of enjoyment from this album. Admittedly, I get more enjoyment from it than I get from other certain albums, which I'll get to later on. Next, we get to The Benz, an album that I love talking about, but I haven't talked about nearly enough on this channel. This is my personal favorite Radiohead album. I think that this was everything I loved about Pablo Honey, but, you know, magnified to a T, really improved upon massively. I think one of the best albums of all time, definitely in my top three albums of all time, I'm going to put this in the 10 tier. I think it is a perfect album. I know that they would go on to make more adventurous stuff, more advanced stuff. I get it. But to me, you cannot take away from this album. Well, yes, I get it. Like, you know, it's not as advanced as OK Computer, not as experimental as Kid A. Every single song on here, in my opinion, is excellent. I love every bit of it. Uh, I, I put it in that 10 tier, one of my favorite albums of all time. Great album cover. And I am go and a bit of a spoiler, there's going to be a few albums up this high. OK Computer, is it really a question? It's also a 10 out of 10. Uh, in many ways, OK Computer took some of the more experimental, more, you know, kind of more, you know, out there parts of uh, the bends and really made a whole album out of it with obviously a, a near flawless track list, one of the most influential and important albums ever released ever. So you cannot take that away from OK Computer. Overall, just extremely solid album. It's one of those albums where I feel like there's not too much else to say about it since there's so much great about it anyway. I love this piece of work. Excellent album, Paranoid Android. Let Down is one of my favorite tracks in their entire discography. Beautiful album. Just, just perfectly crafted. And here we go again with Kid A. I, I have to put Kid A in that 10 tier. This is the last one. I'll give a bit of a spoiler that ranks this high up there. But Kid A, in my opinion, is actually even a slight step up from OK Computer. The more electronic landscapes of it make it one of the most unique albums in their catalog up until that point. And honestly, I think it is another one that has a near flawless track list. And I actually would argue that it's one of the most beautifully composed albums ever made. Uh, the pads used on there, the ambience on there, overall, and, and even, even some of the more emotional moments, like How to Disappear Completely and Motion Picture Soundtrack, I think are some of their most touching moments in their career. Is, but the album also contains some of the most sonically interesting and adventurous moments as well, like Everything in Its Right Place and Idiotech, for example. Hey, I have no um, issues putting Kid A also in that 10 rank. Um, but with that being said, you know, let's move on 
with to the next album, uh, Amnesiac. Uh, Amnesiac is one that I see placed uh, kind of all over, depending on the listener. It is not really any sort of universal agreement on Amnesiac, but I personally really enjoy Amnesiac. I think it was the proper follow-up to um, Kid A. Well, it is, well, it often gets criticized as being a bunch of Kid A B-sides by some people, or outtakes, I should say, instead of B-sides. Uh, I feel like there's a lot to give on Amnesiac, a lot more than a lot of people make out to be, to be completely honest with you. I'm actually going to put it in this nine tier. I think it is an excellent album. I think it comes together nicely. Uh, I have very little complaints about Amnesiac. I think, to me, it just continues what I liked about Kid A over. It's not as well polished, not as impactful, not as not as uh, crucial as Kid A is, in my opinion. But to me, it was a really solid follow-up, a really solid sequel in some sense. And um, yeah, I love Amnesiac. Now, here we get to my first real controversial opinion. Uh, Hail to the Thief. Um, Hail to the Thief is an album that I have tried coming around to quite a bit and really have tried liking, but admittedly I will just admit it right off the bat it is the album I come back to the least and might be my least favorite uh but it's in in some ways it's the album's fault but in other ways it's not the band band's fault on one hand I think that in ter especially compared to you know the four albums that came before it I feel like it's a massive step down in terms of its exploration and innovativeness and just the way I perceive it um and also from a more you know, nitpicky standpoint. I feel like the track list is really kind of messed up on this album. It's very bloated feeling, you know, there's a lot of songs that I feel like don't need to be on here. There's a lot of filler. And I really cannot say that about any other Radiohead album. This is one of their few out, few releases that actually have filler in my opinion. A lot of that has to do with EMI sort of forcing them to uh, put this album out without them refining it. And honestly, that takes a big toll in my opinion. If a lot of these songs were revisited, polished up, and the track order was reorganized in a much more thoughtful way. It could be at least an eight, maybe a seven or an eight. But because the sound of the album doesn't appeal much to me anyway, and the track list is a mess, I'm unfortunately going to have to give it a six. At the end of the day, there's still a lot of highlights on Hail to the Thief. It's still a really well put together album, do not get me wrong. But, you know, when I really just put it in perspective to all their other albums and track list side of it, I just have to put it a little lower. Now we get to In Rainbows, one of their most praised albums, and I completely understand why, especially after an album like Hail to the Thief, while it was generally well-liked, this was a huge improvement. I think just about everybody agrees, you know, In Rainbows, there was a lot of hype around it. The free release online was another thing that got people going. And overall, it's just a relatively solid album. It's another more guitar-based album, which is something I don't draw an issue with. And um, I think they're really, I don't have too many flaws with it, to be completely honest with you. I think it's an extremely well put together album. I think that there's, like I said, very little flaws with it. You know, I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, I, I see myself coming back to this album a lot, and I do come back to it a lot. I'm going to put it in the eight tier. I think that it doesn't, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's their greatest album, and I do think that it does get overhyped by some people who really, you know, put it up there as their greatest. And while I understand that, you know, it is a really well put together album. It's a really solid album. I have no complaints, really. I do think that it does, I still think it doesn't hold up to those, <laughs> these albums up here. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, next up, we have The King of Limbs. This is an album that I have actually um, come back to uh, more than I was expecting. You know, this album is often put towards the bottom along with Pablo Honey on lists, and I get it. But I do admit that this is an album that I honestly have come around to quite a bit since when I first heard it. And I would definitely now put it in the eight tier. You know, I will say not every single song on the album is a standout track. Not every single song blows me away. But it's very concise and might not be as impressive as some of their other albums. And I get that. But to me, it's a relatively short, concise, you know, well-crafted album. I have no real complaints, really. And I enjoy it. So I feel pretty comfortable putting it in that eight tier. And then now we have the most recent one, uh, Moon Shaped Pool. Uh, definitely a more chamber sound to it, a much more orchestral sound to it, and definitely a much more, uh, I don't want to say the word depressing, because that has a negative connotation, but 
a much more emotional album, I should say, which is uh, saying a lot for Radiohead because <laughs> they're very emotional. I'm also going to put that in the eight range. I really enjoy this album, just like the other ones in the eight range. I don't think it is their absolute, absolute, absolute best, but I get a lot of enjoyment from it. I think it has some of Radiohead's most touching moments. I think some of their best compositions as well. And I just think it is a relatively well put together album that proves that Radiohead is still on the cutting edge and is still one of the uh, top artists out there. So I feel pretty comfortable giving a Moonshaped Fool an eight out of 10. Really solid album just across the board. Um, with that being said, that is my Radiohead tier ranking. I have the Ben's um, Kid A and OK Computer at the top in the 10 range, Amnesiac standalone in the nine range, In Rainbows, The King of Limbs in a Moonshaped Pool at number eight or in the eight range. Pop the Honey at seven, and unfortunately, Hail to the Thief at six. But those are all positive scores for anybody new here. You know, anything above a five is good. So those are all positive. I just wanted to make this quick video because I really have been wanting to talk more about Radiohead in general on this channel. And I feel like now was, now was a good time because, you know, I just talked about the bends in my recent uh, Great Albums video, and it just kind of inspired me to make this. Hope you guys liked it. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. So take everything I say with a massive grain of salt. I enjoy all these albums. That is it. And goodbye.